you don't get that a million bob deal every every month yeah you know what i mean yeah. and the one thing people don't realize about influencing is you have to play the long game millennials <laughs> unless you've built a brand that's yeah, like where a lot of your peers are yeah you're not going to be out. yeah you're not yeah. going to be struggling and fighting with gen z's for gigs yeah yeah they're hungrier they're hungrier they're doing more than you. They are charging less sometimes. <laughs> you think you have experience. Yeah. They have been yeah. on this platform for 10 years, so I'll yeah. charge you yeah. for 10 years. Nobody yeah. cares, bro. It's <laughs> nobody cares. But me, the babes I talk to, they empowered <laughs> women. They can yeah, afford saw, their own drinks. I saw, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a tweet the other day. You don't go out with Nairobi babes. They'll, they'll get you drunk and then take you home in their Mazda. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Financially Incorrect, a podcast sponsored by FX Spessa. And here we talk about things financial literacy, the good things we've done with money, the bad things we've done with money, and the ugly things we've done with money. We're on a road to educate a million people on financial literacy by the end of 2023. So if you like this podcast or any other, please be sure to share it with a friend. Maybe they might learn a thing or two. So today I have um, a really, uh, how do I say this? I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Um, um, I have Rama Oroj with me, um, cons uh, commonly known as Ramsey. Um, I have so many things that I want to find out from you and hear from you. Um, <laughs> uh, let me just start <laughs> by allowing you to introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, um, my name is Rama, Rama yeah. Oroj, um, commonly known as Ramsey. Yeah. I am an advertising professional and um, an artist. And I do a couple of other things on the side, so I'm a jack of a lot of trades. Yeah. Yeah. Not all, but a lot of trades. A lot of them. Not all of them. I can't do everything, but I yeah. do a lot. I do yeah. quite a lot, yeah. So I, I am particularly steeped about having this conversation because um, for a long time I wanted to understand how exactly the agency world works and the fiduciary elements around the, the, yeah. the, the agency world against the pressures um, um, within that space and how I guess agency people talk and also your um, journey as a, as a content creator, especially the financial element of it yeah. and what that was like. So for me, this is just to sort of um, set the conversation um, up. This is something I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, and maybe where we can begin is literally from the beginning, you know, um, in terms of your upbringing. Um, what was that like? Um, where did you grow up? Was it middle class? Was it um, Runda? Um, <laughs> or was it the other side of, what did they say, the other side of the tracks? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the other side of the railroad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was brought up in South B, mm -hmm. um, my formative years, mm -hmm. um, between maybe, like I'd say, maybe that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. Um, and I moved, I moved from South B when I was about six years old. Yeah. So middle class, I'd, I'd consider South B mm -hmm. a middle class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up in South B till I was six. Mm -hmm. Um, then I moved to Dagoretti. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was still schooling in South B. So I know South B like the back of my, my hand mm -hmm. because I've been born and raised there for mm -hmm. at least, I'd say 14 years. Okay. 14, 15 years. Yeah. 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 Okay. And um, so when you say middle class, um, just to ensure, I guess, we have sort of the same definition. That means, I mean, good school. Good school, yeah. yeah. Even the public schools are quite dope. So yeah. I, I yeah. went to Plainsview Primary School. So mm. back when it was Plainsview, before the free primary education, because <coughs> I think the free, free primary education really mm. brought up a, a lot of yeah. the standards <laughs> down, you know, because yeah. now, you know, you couldn't it's pay for free. some things. It was yeah. free. So yeah. and then... Since it was free, like the all the people who wanted better schools mm -hmm. but couldn't mm -hmm. get the better schools, mm -hmm. it's especially public schools, mm -hmm. just moved their kids from. Like, if if you've grown up in South Bay, you know there's um, there's Maria Kani Primary School, there's Our Lady of Mercy Primary mm -hmm. School, there's Plainsview Primary School, mm -hmm. there's Nairobi South Primary School. Mm -hmm. um, all of them used to be bougie schools, mm -hmm. though they were. Public schools are very bougie, apart mm -hmm. from Maria Kani. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Maria Kani is just on the border of South B and the slum. Ah, so okay. a lot of the kids from around the uh, slum areas used to go, go to, to Maria, Maria, Kani. Maria okay. Kani. But then what happened when the primary, primary school thing came along, yeah. guys were like, hey, why am I taking my kids to this yeah, school yeah. here can, that's dilapidated when yeah. I, they can go to Plainsview. Yeah. They can go to Nairobi South. Yeah. You know? And then all the kids that were in Plainsview, Nairobi yeah. South, yeah. 
and these other schools now move to the private schools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you did. So basically, you did eight four four, and it was still out of seven seven hundred. My the, case, my the, case. <laughs> <laughs> your KCP. <laughs> if you put it that way, it sounds like <laughs> it's not like seven hundred. <laughs> yeah. So I did. I did my KCP when it was yeah. out of seven hundred. Yeah, seven hundred. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what you got? I, I do I remember I, I remember I got when I keep saying this and people think yeah. wow you must have been the most I got four hundred and eighty six marks yeah yeah, yeah. four hundred eighty six and 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 to me that four eighty six was zero effort yeah I mean, like I'm, I I I hope my sons are different because <laughs> I I by then to school I never yeah. like I I used to think education is important yeah. but then in terms of studying yeah. And it's, I used to let study only when you, I'm in school. Let me ask you an interesting question on education. Do yeah. you have a conscious memory of you, whether in primary school or high school, of you studying? I do. You do? I do. You know, interestingly, I don't. For me, I used to study for the subjects that I found the most interesting. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that I used to do in school, I remember for, in Form 2, like for a full year, mm -hmm. I had a diary where I had just write down quotes from famous people mm -hmm. like Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. you know. Um, You're a history buff. Uh, I used to be a history buff in yeah. Form 2. Yeah. So I had a book where I just had quotes. Yeah. Every single day I'd look for a quote from a, his from a famous historical figure yeah. and I just put it in that um, diary. Uh, okay. And what was money like at home at this point? Uh, I was raised by a single mom. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say we had excess. Mm -hmm. We had, on our best days, we had enough. Mm. Yeah. No, last days, you know, you just had to understand hey, it's it just mom doing stuff. everything by herself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did that, um, were you around other people who had money? Did you grow up around, whether it was other kids or cousins or uh, people like that, who you uh, felt had more than you did? So, okay, so the, the funny thing about my family is my mom was a single mom, but then we were the sort of rich family in the family mm -hmm. <laughs> you, were the, you were the cousins my mom was that rich my mom was that rich auntie but since she was she was juggling everything by herself yeah, yeah. you know we really didn't feel the rich auntie vibe but mm. you could tell like with subtle hints like you know these guys they're schooling in south b you yeah. know um, they get allowances and they yeah. go to school yeah. you know you <laughs> <laughs> so you like you are those cousins the ones who show up and they the event sort of changes. Yeah, not yeah. really, but we are yeah. those cousins who host everybody. You know, uh, okay. in December, okay. you know, you're all going to Rama's house. Okay, okay. In in uh, for Easter, you're all going to Rama's house. Mm -hmm. When guys are in the shags, if mom pulls up with us, you know, we just it's know, you know, yeah, everybody's going to you. There's enough for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I've just you just talked about allowances. How how was that? Um, how did she introduce that concept to you? Um, actually, I would say it was introduced to me by my grandfather. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather was a chef, mm -hmm. um, and he used to reward us mm -hmm. for showing him affection. I don't say we he used to we used to buy his affection. We used mm -hmm. to buy our affection, mm -hmm. but if he came home, everybody who ran to him got something. Got something, and it was usually <laughs> he has a he had a lot of coins. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Get a one bob coin. Yeah. But then one bob a one bob coin, and it's not a but it's not a long time ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but a one bob coin will get Those you like they were like ten cents biscuits that were as big as a coin. Mm. So they're like mm. different biscuits. Mm. Like you'd have foxes. Mm. You'd have you know when you're a kid, it's like mm. that thing is this tiny. Yeah. Yeah. But. We'd run to him just so we get that one bob, two bob, three bob, and then run to the shops to go buy the cookies. Mm. Yeah. So that's where the, the initial concept of... That's when I started realizing what money can do for you. Yeah. Because he introduced me to money. And yeah. I always knew, you know, you have to do things for money. It's, mm. It just doesn't fall off the sky. Mm. It, it doesn't mm. grow on trees. Mm. You know, you either have to work for money or someone has to love you enough to give you the money. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how do you then get into, I guess, maybe just for the journey perspective. So after high school, um, or what high school do you go to and what's the journey after high school into, into uh, tertiary education? So I, I went to public schools when mm. public schools were, were really dope. Mm. Um, and then unfortunately, when primary school education became free, mm. We were part of the first group. I think we were part of the first group of guys because I think with the with the KCP marks going mm -hmm. from seven hundred to five hundred, mm -hmm. it was part of the structure. Mm -hmm. So for them to be free, they had to reduce the amount of subjects people do. Mm -hmm. um, so 
um, in primary school, things like agriculture and I think um, home science were knocked off the syllabus. Yeah. yeah. Just when we were leaving, and then when we get in, when we got into high school, um, things like art and design mm -hmm. for schools that weren't really performing good in some of the subject mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. they were being removed and put into like different. So you had schools that are known for specific things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like like. I'll give an example. Like, for example, if you want to play football pro professionally, mm -hmm. um, if you're in Nairobi, it's Kamkunji. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to be a bowler mm -hmm. for your career, you'd mm -hmm. have to go through Kamkunji. Mm -hmm. um, in Kakamega, it was, you know, Kakamega High. Mm -hmm. For rugby, rugby and football. Yeah. Um, same for, I think, changes. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and Dagoreti High. Mm -hmm. If you really wanted to be play rugby, you know, those are the schools yeah. that were known for that specific yeah. Yeah. Um, area of yeah. expertise. You know, ex expertise, I'd say, education. Yes. Yeah. And then there was other schools that were known for other things like science, you know, mm -hmm. um, art and design. Like science fairs. You know, science fairs. Right. The schools that just used to scoop up everything. So I went yeah. to Parklands High School. Mm -hmm. I know it's called <laughs> Dr. Ribeiro. Um, um, I went to Parklands High. Um, I went to Plainsview Primary School in mm -hmm. South B. And yeah, that, that, that was my journey. Just... Yeah. You know, here yeah, to here, to there. yeah, and thereafter. Okay, so so you finish, you finish high school. So I finish high school. Yeah, you're still. I'm assuming your your or what happens with your allowance structure? Does it move from a so <laughs> benevolent? <laughs> so my my, my my allowance structure, because yeah. you know my mom was single, so yeah. at her best we had enough. We didn't have excess. At yeah. her best we had enough. Yeah. So, um, because we had enough, mm. um, my mom started taking up the responsibility of educating my cousins who are in the sh in shags. Mm -hmm. So um, in high school, by the time I was in form two, mm -hmm. it was just me, my sister. But then by the time I was in form two, mm -hmm. um, we had like three other cousins living with us and my mom was taking care of their um, school fees. Mm -hmm. So just to make sure everybody has at least a level start. Yeah. That's what happened. So yeah. it got tougher for me. Mm -hmm. I had to understand that sacrifices have to be made. Mm -hmm. These are these are cousins. Yeah. Um, and so I started being entrepreneurial mm -hmm. as early as uh, as early as class. I'd say class class seven. Mm -hmm. I was entrepreneurial mm -hmm. in class seven. What were you selling? Or so in primary school, if you remember, guys used to have the mathematical sets, the Oxford, the Oxfords, yes, and yes. the coffers. Yes. Some people used to have double decker sets. Yes, <laughs> Remember? yes. With yes, the carpet yes, 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 at the yes, bottom. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. you had a section yeah. for pens yeah. and then you had another one just yeah. for pencils. There's some producers here who don't yeah. know what they're talking about. <laughs> some Gen Z producers here who don't know what they're talking about. So yeah. those sets, yeah. guys, because I, I, I used to make them yeah. and I had mine. You know, you'd put a tape at the between the top yeah. and the bottom. Yeah. And then you'd open it, you'd put a carpet, yeah. top, bottom, and then you'd be like, okay, it looks nice. But yeah. another time is when the Nganyas had just come through, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Matatu culture. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of stickers, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. Ogopa DJ's logo, then yeah. the Bad Boy logo. Yeah. So I used to draw those Fubu. things. Fubu, I used to draw that stuff. And then put a tape on top of it mm -hmm. and sell it as a sticker. Mm. So a lot of the classmates I had used to sell them for five bob. Mm. They'd buy stickers from me. Um, I went from drawing them by hand mm. to now tracing. So I'd had, I had the, I don't know if it's called Manila paper, but there's that luminous paper. Not, not tracing paper. No, 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 no. There's luminous paper, I think. Mm. It's, it's, it's called Manila. Yeah, it's the Manila. But Manila is different. Manila, Manila used, to be, like the, 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 used the, to be the one for chats. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, another yeah, one that's, yeah. it, was, it, it was a highlight paper. It was white at the at the at the back, mm -hmm. and you'd have luminous green, luminous pink. Mm. Really I, like I don't know what the name it is, yeah. but it's it's it's. I used to buy those. Mm. So what what I would do is I would cut out names. Mm. I'd cut out logos and put either green on top of orange or mm. orange on top of green, and then put the large giant mm. um, the giant cello tape, and then cut around the writings, mm. and I'd sell those at stickers. Mm. So I used to maybe make, on a week in class seven, mm. I was making anything between 50 bob to 100 bob per week. Mm. In my okay. entire class class seven. And that that's how I also learned a bit of responsibility. Mm. Um, because when I got to class eight, 
the type of clothes I was getting, the type of shoes I was getting mm. from my mom weren't cool enough. You were like, it's not. It's I'm not like, it. nah. <laughs> That's why I'm saving money. Yeah. Thrift. Yeah. So in class eight, when guys would come in for Saturday classes, mm. I'd always be the one of the freshest kids. Mm. And nobody knew I was buying some of those clothes for myself because what my mom could get was just not my style. You yeah. Know? So you're using your 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 sticker you know, money, sticker money to basically yeah. get you fresh and, and yeah, and, and, and my clean fresh yeah stuff. Yeah. I I I when I got to class eight, um, some of my classmates I realized some of my classmates used to live in Upper Hill, mm-hmm. so Upper Hill and South B is not that far, mm-hmm. and they used to walk mm-hmm. to town. So on days when I didn't have to go home with my sister mm-hmm. um, from school, mm-hmm. I just used to save. That fair and, and just, just walk to town and then connect yeah. home. Yeah. Okay. So you're finding different ways of being able to. Yeah. Save so as much so those you know income. like yeah. ways to save money because I think it taught me a lot of financial management mm-hmm. and also a lot of saving because mm-hmm. a lot of us really spend money on a lot of unnecessary things. Yeah. Like you you drive to places you can walk. Yeah. yeah. You know you. You do the most. Yeah. For when, the when most. I mean, just to, to to say you know yeah. I have a car or like to feel yeah. like status and yeah. that's something that i've noticed even now in my adulthood um there's habits i had when i was younger that i don't really carry anymore like i was telling my workmate yeah. today in the morning like you know I, I feel like i should be jarving more i should be using public transport yeah. more because where i live is just next to the bus stop but i uber every single day to work and back yeah. and one of my reasons for ubering was i told myself when i was coming back to nairobi hey you have the option mm-hmm. of buying a car mm-hmm. and living in an empty house mm-hmm. or <laughs> furnishing your entire house yeah, and, Uber. and Ubering yeah. to work. And I chose the latter. Mm-hmm. And I told myself, you know what, before you buy a car, see if you can actually sustain mm-hmm. the expense mm-hmm. of you know, using a cab back and yeah. forth every yeah. single day and everywhere you're going, yeah. just using a cab. And then now you can figure out because a car, is, a car eventually is going it's to gonna, be cheaper than... Yeah. Than Ubering, of then, course. Then Ubering, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Just building that muscle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, do you carry on your entrepreneurial spirit through high school? Yes. Yeah. So, that spirit of creating started when I was in primary school. Mm-hmm. In high school, what I used to do, um, I used to do the same thing. Um, guys would commission me for posters. Mm-hmm. I draw posters, but my biggest money maker was responding to mail. Responding to mail. In, yeah, responding to letters. Okay. These love letters, because <laughs> a lot of a lot yeah. of dudes in 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 high school, yeah. you know, you don't have the words. Ah, <laughs> you, don't have, you know, you don't have the words <laughs> to express how you feel. Right, right. You know, right, a babe right. has written you a proper love letter yeah. from Sri where she yeah. sprayed the the love letter with <laughs> perfume. You know, you know those notebooks with roses all yeah. around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And a guy will read that letter and be like, "Hey, you know, I don't know what to say." And yeah. They come to me and yeah. be like read this thing yeah. and respond as if yeah. you were me. Yeah. And I would read the letters, I'd open the letters. I don't know how many how many babes <laughs> I, I made fall in love. I never counted. There's no way to check for ROI. But yeah. I used to love I used to write love letters mm-hmm. for my classmates for a fee. Okay. So in high school the same form one, form two, I was mm-hmm. making anything between fifty bob to two hundred bob a mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you pay me in mandazis oh, and bajiyas uh, or you pay me in cash. cash. Yeah. It's this, it doesn't it made, matter. It made no difference. Yeah. So I'd save some of my money, mm-hmm. combine it with some of the money I was making selling posters yeah. and selling, um, selling, writing love letters for yeah. people. Yeah. And that's also. And at this time, you're still buying um, still, fresh clothes. Like that's uh, what, yeah, is, that's that's, what that's, it's still about. I used to thrift. I was thrifting <laughs> then. You just call them Tumba, but then, then yeah. it was, you know, thrifting, there's a word just came the other yeah. day. But. Yeah. I'd save up enough money to buy nice shoes that, mm. you know, if you if if I show up somewhere and, and I know people are, your your folks bought the clothes for you and yeah. I yeah. pull up and I'm rocking something you haven't seen, you know, I used to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be okay. that guy because okay. I pick the clothes for myself. Did, yeah. Like, yeah, I have money, I'll buy, you know. <laughs> okay. So how do you make the decision? Um, um, how, how do you get into agency from high school? Like, what's, what are the things, what are the significant things that happen? Yeah. And, does, and, and what role does money play in getting you to, to, to where you got to? So I would say because I was a salesman from a very young age. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're convincing guys to sell stickers, you're convincing guys to buy, you know, 
posters and you're writing love letters for mm. people so that they can pay you. They don't know how to talk to girls. Mm. As a salesman, mm. um, I would say my, my people skills mm. were developed between primary school mm. and high school. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was finishing um, high school, mm. um, I was doing odd jobs. I was doing odd jobs, like, um, you know, letters, you know, piling people's phone bills mm. for a daily wager, you know, mm. um, being a volunteer. I was a volunteer um, with St. John Ambulance, mm -hmm. um, training high school kids, first aid, mm -hmm. um, taking kids for boot camps. Mm -hmm. So I was doing very many different odd jobs and interacting with guys built inside me that ability to talk um, and then I discovered social media mm -hmm. um, at some point in that process of volunteering and mm -hmm. doing a lot of odd jobs at this point um, my mom is doing her best mm -hmm. you know she's educating like five kids mm -hmm. by herself mm -hmm. so I'm the first one mm -hmm. and I had to I had to find my way mm -hmm. you know m my mom was like was it express were you expressly told or was it more she was Something like, I could see. You know, yeah. sometimes parents don't need to tell you things. Mm. I could just see, like, wow, she's doing her best, mm. and her best is still... Mm. We're not there, you yeah. know. We're not... That's when now it dawned on me, like, bro, you guys are not rich kids by any measure. <laughs> you guys are working class. Yeah. And if your mom loses her job... It's going to be tough. It's mm. Very close to poverty. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, I've, I've been exposed to different cultures, mm. I've been exposed at that point to um, better education than where I live at. Mm -hmm. um, I know the town like the back of my mind, mm -hmm. um, the back of my hand. I know CBD. Mm -hmm. I know everywhere in the city. Yeah. And so I started finding my way around. I mm -hmm. got into social media. So how old were you when, I guess, you got into social media? Um, or what year was it? I'd there? say maybe 21, around mm -hmm. there about, like 21, maybe 19. Mm -hmm. Actually, 21, because Facebook came, like, way later. Mm. Um, so by this time, you're saying social media at this point would be what, like, MySpace, High Five? I, I, yeah, I, do, I mean, I used to hear about High Five. I didn't yeah. have the phone to High Five. Ah, I just okay. used to hear, you know, hey, you guys yeah. are getting babes. You're, yeah. talking to, you're chatting babes <laughs> on your phone. What yeah, do you mean? Yeah. Make 33, what are those? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you guys are... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so guys are yeah, like, what, what yeah. are these things? Yeah, you know, technology. Because yeah. back then, before social media, we used to talk to our friends abroad on Yahoo. They just yeah. had those long, funny emails. Yeah, you yeah. just go to the cyber and you open your emails and you just laugh. You laugh. Yeah. That was the social media yeah, then. Yeah. Then came MiG-33, CG, all these things. I didn't have a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the most popular phone back then that could do all that stuff was a Nokia Engage. They had at the N series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, right now, at, at that point, I'm playing with a Siemens A33, yeah. <laughs> A36, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your screen was as wide as your thumb. Yeah, yeah. That was it. If, you, if someone the sent you... had limited Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it has 140 characters. Someone sends you more than that, it comes as two messages. Yeah, yeah. And the first one to be continued, and then <laughs> <laughs> you, read, yeah, yeah. you read the next one. So I was like, yeah, you know, you guys really... You guys are chatting people on yeah. your phone. Anyway, yeah. Facebook came up. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time at the cyber just yeah. keeping up with friends. And then in between keeping up with my friends, some of who were abroad, you know, and after high school, you want yeah. to check up on your guys. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Are you guys faring? At that point, I'm doing odd jobs. I'm a volunteer. So um, I find myself on Facebook. Facebook, make friends there. Um, between my friends on Facebook and my friends from St. John Ambulance, you know, there's a suggestion to mm -hmm. join Twitter because it's the new, it's the new it's thing. It's the place to be. It's the place to be for people who have a lot yeah. to say, you know. Yeah. And you can say things live. You can report the news live. You yeah. can yeah. comment on the news as it's, ha it's happening. Yeah. So I found myself there. And, you know, after I joined Twitter, the rest is history because yeah. that's where I found my commons. Mm -hmm. People who love art just as much as I do. Mm -hmm. um, people who are interested in the news just as much as I do. Mm -hmm. um, guys who used to read commentary about the news and blogs. Because mm -hmm. Twitter primarily was just bloggers, mm -hmm. um, media guys, mm -hmm. and guys who are interested in advertising and follow media people mm -hmm. and bloggers just to hear what, what's being said about their campaigns, mm -hmm. their brands, and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I ended up meeting a couple of moguls in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I met up with um, George Luther. I always 
George Luther, Joe Mushiri. Joe Mushiri gave me my first radio gig. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, you know, it was Joe put me on Capital, Luther put me on, you know, on the biggest agency in East and Central yeah. Africa. Yeah. Because yeah. then they were forming, they were just forming a digital wing. Okay. And I think a lot of times people say digital, it's very practical mm -hmm. as, a, as a platform. Yeah. Um, you need someone who understands how people talk on those platforms. You need someone who understands how the platform works. Mm -hmm. And so I came into the agency world on the back end of, I understand things from the user perspective. Mm -hmm. Now what I was trained on, on what you see <clears throat> on social yeah. comes from somewhere. Yeah. And so my whole journey through advertising was like now reverse engineering what we see, the how, big how brand saying, there. yeah, how yeah. do we get to... How do we get to that street? Yeah. How do we get to that Facebook post? There's yeah. a whole strategy behind that. There's a whole, you know, personas yeah. being like it's it's a complex world in advertising. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, with my enthusiasm, and I was very interested in advertising it from a very young age. You know, logos, you know, brands, yeah. things I used to make stickers out of. Now yeah. I'm in the industry, developing these things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when when, when Joe Mushu is getting you into radio, how much? Are you being offered, if anything at all? What's the position? And what's the same answer to that question on uh, agency side? Okay, so yeah. on radio, like, okay, I don't know if the model is still the same, yeah. but radios are like podcasts. When, when I was getting in, you yeah. know, on your podcast, you don't start making money yeah. until you start getting <laughs> ad money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could be here for two years. And you're just... And if you're, not, if you're not picking up, it's not rolling over into a bigger thing. Yeah. You end up giving up. Cause yeah. I, I was talking to the, because I was, because I have my own podcast, and I yeah. was talking yeah. to a lot of producers and yeah. stuff. And all the producers told me, you know, the fail rate for podcasts is quite high. It's very high. Because <laughs> <laughs> people get in, and they're they like, think, yeah, 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 we're gonna make the money. Yeah. We're in the money, and then yeah. you find out, bro, if you're not interesting, yeah. if you're not informative, if you're not inspirational or aspirational, mm -hmm. nobody cares about what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, got into radio. I was doing. I did radio for about. One and a half years, two years, mm -hmm. it was a sports show. Mm -hmm. Then in that time I was doing the sports show, um, I was interacting with a lot of guys because now you have a new, your name is now Brigham, my mm -hmm. personal brand mm -hmm. get, got a bit bigger. Yeah. So now everywhere I go, people are like, hey, you're that guy from my new, hey, and uh, we banter with guys. Yeah. It's like, I hear you, I listen to you on radio. Yeah. And yeah. In, that, in that environment, I made the switch from radio to advertising and discovered I have a brand, personal mm. brand now. But so, but fiduciary stuff, like money stuff, so on the radio it was for building the brand. Yeah, for me it was just, you it know, wasn't his you, you guy, so you've, come from, you've come from volunteering. Mm. This is just the same concept. Mm. But what you're getting in return mm -hmm. is you're building confidence first mm. and you're building your personal brand. Okay. Um, the money might come, who knows? Yeah. If it yeah. doesn't, What's your takeout? Yeah. And to me, that was the most important thing. Is that a conscious decision that you made beforehand? Or is it something that you, when you're looking now retrospectively, I'm like, yeah, this is what I was doing. I went through different emotions when I was on radio, mm -hmm. to be very honest. In the beginning, it was exciting. At some point, I thought, yeah, you, you, this is going to be a career. But then, you know, it's tough mm -hmm. to crack radio. Mm -hmm. And I went for where I'm getting money. So yeah. I left radio, went into advertising, advertising, where they're paying me, you know. Okay. Then advertising was crazy because of the hours. Yeah. I, I just wanted the weekend to rest. Yeah. Or if I was going somewhere, yeah. you know, I'm going to have fun, and yeah. then I'm sleeping mm. on Sundays, and my show is for Sundays on radio. So okay. I made the, I made the easier choice. The easier choice. Yeah. So let's get into the advertising space, which I think, um, I guess for me, like I said, was one thing that I was really looking forward to uh, um, getting to. Yeah. So when you're getting into advertising, are you getting in at entry level? Um, yes. Entry level. Entry level, the because you know, like when when I was called at um, Scanad, I thought I was gonna be a graphic designer because that's my background and training mm -hmm. um, in graphic in graphic design. But again, advertising is very practical. Mm -hmm. You might have the papers, mm -hmm. but then, bro, you walk into an advertising studio, you see how people write the ads, mm -hmm. you see how people do the creative, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, I, you need to regroup. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's. It's a balance yeah. of marketing and art. Yeah. And you come in sometimes, you're either fully marketing or fully yeah. art. You don't, you have to learn that balance because mm -hmm. the balance comes now from workflows. Okay. This is the brief. 
This is how we're going to approach the brief. This is why this works. This is why it doesn't work. And you have to be cool with taking rejection. Yeah. Rejection internally, rejection from the client. If you have to redo the same thing three, four times, then that's what it takes. Yeah. And that's what the consumers resonate with, yeah. and you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So entry level, how much at that time are people being? I mean, I, was, I would, I would say, because uh, you know, when, when you know how people have like the drafts. Yeah. NBA. It's like oh, my doors <laughs> just opened <laughs> at once. I was on radio, and yeah. then I got an offer from two other different agencies. Oh, at the same time. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah. One was a creative director role, because that person had seen the potential I have in mm -hmm. terms of, but I'd never done creative direction mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes I'm always like, I wish people see me the way, I, I wish I see myself the way people see me. Mm -hmm. So I declined that role because, mm -hmm. you know, there was no job security in that role. I'd okay. never been a creative director before. Okay. I mean, I can creatively direct things. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? At that point, I was, I think I was 25, 26. Okay. 25, 26. So yeah. someone's offering me. That's my first job as a creative director. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'm going to... Because yeah. then you see when you start big, you have to go back. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and what was the money for that offer? And it was like 30 years to be a creative director. Yeah. Like, no At wonder. <laughs> you guy, you're giving me a big name. <laughs> and you're offering me 30 years, you know. Hey, it's a creative director. And then where do I go home now? After those brilliant ideas, oh, how do you go home? Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. And you see the thing about... Um, the thing about... And I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunate. Mm -hmm. You know how people tell you when you're hungry mm -hmm. and someone offers you food, you'd eat anything? Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when yeah. you've been out there tamaking for... <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. And for, for a long time. And the guys know, you know, yeah. they have an upper hand. We have the power. You know, I'm yeah. going to give you. Yeah. Guaranteed. Every 27th, you have 30 Gs. Yeah, you, by the way, you could be out there saying, ah, you can make 50. Mm. But that 50, but, you know, but you'll, make it in 60, two, yeah. you'll make it in 60 days. And when yeah. you calculate... If someone's giving you 30K yeah. in 30 days and someone else is giving you 70K in 60 days, yeah. you know, you'll say, yeah, let me go for the like 70. <laughs> but then, bro, it's when you Those look at period. when you, when you, when you, you know, and it's called tranquilation. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you calibrate and tranquilate everything, yeah. you're getting stressed to earn yeah. to to 5K, 5K, 5K more. 5K yeah. more per month. Per month. Yeah. So it was a decision for me to make. It was like, hey, bro, you know you're the firstborn in your family. Um, you're still living with your mom. Mm -hmm. Take it. And I took it. But then I took that job mm -hmm. with a clear vision in my mind mm -hmm. that this is not what I want to be doing in the next five years. Mm -hmm. So usually for me, I, have a, I usually have like five-year plans mm -hmm. um, in terms of my trajectories. Mm -hmm. And they work for me. Mm -hmm. Every election... I'm aiming higher. Mm -hmm. So in five years, I'm in a different space mm -hmm. and it has worked for me mm -hmm. consistently since I got employed. Okay. Yeah. So so when you get into into this big agency, yeah. Um so you're starting so you're to get it to get to get it clear, you're starting off at this thirty thirty five, yeah. 30, 30, 30, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, it was enough. <laughs> it was like, bro, who, who, how many people <laughs> yeah. from 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 Where guys who went to school from, with me, yeah. like how many yeah. of them? I remember at this point. Um, I've only done graphic design. Yeah. Um, I want to do multimedia, mm -hmm. a multimedia course. I yeah. get into film, maybe get into animation. Yeah. At this point, I'm just thinking, how do I get the the pressure off my yeah. mom's neck? Yeah. Because okay. whether it's me contributing to the expenses Today, right. or me saying, hey, you have one less mouth to feed. Okay. Whichever way you. Whichever way I was gonna yeah. do it, yeah. I decided. Let me take up this. Job okay. Yeah. And what's then your your trajectory from that point? Like um, from that thirty five, as you're working your way up through through the agency. So what's, ho what's hopefully like? we won't get to how much I'm earning right <laughs> now. But <laughs> <laughs> so I start off on yeah. I start off on thirty five. Yeah. I'm paying taxes. Yes, know. because above twenty four, you yeah, you know, like uh, yeah, at twelve, like bro, you have a, yeah. I got an a NHIF, yes, NSSF yeah. card. Then, I'm like but now you're actually a proper adult. Yeah. You yeah. have a wallet with an NSSF card and an HIF card. Yeah. So I work on 35. I was a content writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, no, I was a, yeah, I was a content writer slash community manager. Yeah. So it means I, I, I sit in brainstorms. Mm -hmm. When your creative guys come up with the, 
back then we didn't have digital was quite new. Mm-hmm. So there was no, uh, d- d- and, and no digital department. There's no digital department. Yeah. So it's a creative idea. Yeah. Take it. Turn it into translate it. to content. There's no digital <laughs> strategy. Yeah. In between there, yeah. it was just like a segue, like maybe three slides. <laughs> so this is how we bring this idea online. Yeah. So back then it was that um, three. Three slides, get into digital. You remember, I used to go for pitches and used to go for presentations where you you'd maybe have a presentation with 57 slides mm-hmm. and the digital slides are the last seven ones. Plus, <laughs> thank know, you. Plus, know thank you. Is, <laughs> <laughs> which one is bigger? Than <laughs> <you should do. laughs> what is this thing? Why should I be on Facebook? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. been meetings where the old geezers yeah. used to ask, you know, why should I be on social media? What am I getting out of it? Yeah. You know, what's the reason? People still ask that question. Yeah. Till now. Yeah, that's true. You know, and you look at some brands like, I think if you understand your target audience and you understand your customer base, there's just things you cannot afford to be out of. Yeah. So the brands that picked the digital early enough when it was a new thing, if you look at where they are right now, they're Mm. the biggest brands online. Mm. Mm. And when other brands are asking, why do I need to be here? They got left behind. Yeah. And this is when I'm trying to catch up now. Okay, so entry level. And then... They're still very cautious about it. Well, what do I put in? How much investment do I need? This thing should be free. Yeah. It should be cheap. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. bro, you are in people's pockets. Yeah. Why should you be cheap when yeah. someone is just... Mm. I can just pull out my pocket, open an app and see you. Mm. Why should I... Why, sh- why should it be cheap for yeah. you to be that close to people? So it's your customer, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what happened. So at that point, um, I come in. I'm on 35K. And I write amazing content. Mm-hmm. Um, that was when you know when you were starting out, there was no RTCG algorithms. Yeah. So yeah. we used to do for some brands like yeah. up to five pieces of content in a day. Yeah. And you work on a calendar for a full month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you by producing... the time you are done. Yeah. I'm telling you, you've exhausted all your brain cells. Yeah, it's like 150 pieces. Because you have to content. say the same things in different ways. You know, yeah. like if you have brand pillars, if you have a brand. Yeah. And your brand has like maybe five pillars. Yeah. It's those five things you're communicating. It's those five things you're communicating. So if I have to communicate five things every day and then do it for 30 days, you can imagine the volume of content, even getting approval for some of those things. Because then I send it to you, just, wow, where do I start? Mm. How do I give the changes? How do I give Mm. feedback Mm. for Mm. that Mm. much content? Yeah. And so there was not a lot of regulation. There was not a lot of algorithms to determine what's best practice. There was no history to see, okay, if you do this, this is how things work. And so I had to develop a lot of that as I go along. Mm. And I became very good at, you know, people studying, Mm. interpreting data Mm. and all that. And after a year, Mm. I began doing strategy Mm. for digital. And I was like, hey, bro, okay, fine. You have a brilliant creative idea. Mm. But I think for this platform, Mm. these are the demographics. Mm. These are the psychographics. Mm. This is the research we have from Google. And I think we need to put more thought into what we communicate. Mm. So I'm in-house. I've learned creative strategy because I'm... You're doing it. Brand strategy. Yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with a lot yeah. of marketers. Yeah. Every single one of my clients is a marketer. Yeah. They've done it for years. Yeah. So I get to see their presentation from a brand perspective. Mm. I interpret that. I see how those same presentations are taken and they're interpreted in a creative way. Mm-hmm. And now... I can see from end to end. Okay, so brand started here. Mm-hmm. The creative team took it here. Now the digital team has to step up. Mm-hmm. How do I take this creative idea and apply it mm-hmm. to this new, new channel? Yeah. And so what ended up happening is over the course of a year and a half, mm-hmm. one day I just stood up and I told my bosses, hey, l- listen, um, guys, mm-hmm. I need a bigger challenge. Mm-hmm. And if you don't give me a bigger challenge, I will move on. So after five years, I walked up. As I said, I have a, usually have a plan for mm. every five years. Mm. I told my bosses, you know what, guys? I had decided by the time I'm 30, I need more responsibilities. Mm. Either a family or my own company. Mm. Then I had a furniture company. I was mm. making furniture before the, 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 the log ban, yeah. the, the logging ban. Right, right, right. I had my own furniture, I was doing furniture, and I told my bosses, hey, like, if you guys don't give me a bigger challenge, I'm moving on, yeah. and I'll go do other things. Yeah. So my boss is like, what? Okay. 
Because I challenged them and they challenged me. Yeah. Like, okay, now we can move you from content writing and copywriting, take you to strategy because mm. that's where you're shining right now. Mm. And I was put on strategy. Mm. Um, and I had a bump yeah. on strategy. I had a significant mm-hmm. bump in Salo. But you still, you still not told us. You let us at 35K. So from 35, from 35- so <laughs> me, what I told yeah. HR, <laughs> if you're moving yeah. me yeah. from content writing to strat yeah. back then 100 g's was like a lot mm. you know with 100 g's i was i could move out yeah i can furnish my digs because i was getting a lot of side gigs influencer mm. gigs on the side as, as well mm. um so i had a main hustle which was advertising mm. and i was getting a lot of influencer gigs on the side because as part of the first group of guys to be actually influencers in the yeah. country yeah so i moved on um I, I, they gave me an offer mm-hmm. i got an offer from Somebody wanted to poach me. They gave me 100 Gs mm-hmm. plus tax. Mm-hmm. I moved to HR with the offer letter. I was like, this is what I'm being given. Yeah. And I think it's good enough. They're giving me more responsibilities. Mm-hmm. I'm exercising more, a lot of my... I'm, I'm applying a lot of the knowledge that I've learned while I've been working mm-hmm. here because there's, there's a lot of training. Because mm-hmm. we're working on big brands. Mm-hmm. So I understood a lot of things and how a lot of things work. And digital was quite new then. We didn't even have... Courses set up mm-hmm. just to certify that this guy knows so what he's what doing. He's about, yeah. So <laughs> I took the offer letter to them. Mm-hmm. They matched it. They were like, okay, so how much do you want? And I told them, right now I'm on 35. Yeah. The tax rate is 35%. <laughs> right? Yeah. Me, I want, after my taxes are deducted, yeah. I see 100,000 in my in bank my, account. That's what I want to see. Not 99,000, not 101,000. <laughs> I just need 100 going flat on my account. Yeah. I'm a single man. Yeah. I'm like 27. I remember back then I was like 28, 29. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it's, this is new. Mm. In, never in my wildest thought would I imagine that, you know, and, and, and this is something that used to happen a lot when we were just recruited into agency, when mm. digital agencies were being set up. I yeah. remember we are like a zoo. Mm. The creatives used to pass where we're seated as a digital team. Mm. And they just come and marvel, like they stand behind us, like, why people can't see these guys? These guys are getting paid to Facebook and tweets. <laughs> what, is, what is this madness? Yeah, you know? yeah. And it, I just feel like a spectacle because yeah. it was so new. It was something that hadn't been done mm. before. And it was, I was a front end, it was just social media. Mm. Now you have so many faucets mm. and different areas and disciplines of digital. Mm. It's crazy. So I, I want to ask a few questions, I guess, yeah. before you even continue that story. Because um, this is after, what, three, 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 four years of experience? I'd say that was, I got my bump after uh, three years, yeah. Three years of experience. Three years of experience, yeah. It, was that because, like, at the time, like you're saying, people really didn't value um, what the digital space was like? Because I'm assuming right now, that's not something, an offer that, you, that anyone would entertain at three years of experience at 100 Gs. I mean, like, it depends on your job role. Yeah. Because to be very honest, yeah. um, digital is quite dynamic. And if I gave you the structure of a digital team and what mm-hmm. everyone does, they give you the skeleton structure. Mm-hmm. It's a bit crazy, and not everyone is going to earn the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, that bump wasn't so much because of what I was doing. Mm-hmm. It was... First, the amount of business I was handling and bringing in, mm-hmm. um, opportunities I would be able to point out, mm-hmm. how I blended the different efforts between creative and digital and mm-hmm. what the clients valued. Because mm-hmm. I was getting compliments internally from, you yeah, good, good job, you know, mm-hmm. client says nice things about you. Mm-hmm. And this, so I was becoming a leader in, in, my, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my specific mm-hmm. organization, in my specific department. Okay. So it was just natural, like, hey, if someone is willing to give you this for the same service, mm-hmm. and we know how much money you're bringing in, because yeah. back then I wasn't thinking in terms of P and L, yeah. you know, profit and loss. Yeah. Even that wasn't that was like below my value. But yeah, since you know, I'm a guy that's you know, I have responsibilities. Yeah. I know where I'm from. Yeah. I just said, yeah, bring it, bring it, bring okay. it. So you and get I'd to step point. up to the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So you get to your your place of a hundred net. Yeah. Right. Now I'm um, in the three percenters in, in, <laughs> 3% Kenya. in Kenya. <laughs> okay. If we work to um, a close enough place, not to you know close enough to where you are now, yeah. but what kind of um, uh, pay scales against um, job descriptions and things that you're doing at the company um, would someone be expected to look at, or did you go through in your journey 
um, transitioning in the agency space. So I've worked vac- vertically up every single department you can mm-hmm. think of in a digital agency. Yeah. The only thing that I haven't done in an agency, but I've done it on a personal capacity mm-hmm. and I've done it for my consultancy agency is yeah. media buying okay. like large budgets. Mm-hmm. So I'm boosting ads and all that. So I understand in a digital agency the role of every single person mm-hmm. and how they complement each other. Mm-hmm. So I would say for you to become a head of digital or leader, uh, digital mm-hmm. team, mm-hmm. it's anything between 300 and 500. Okay. Yeah. Ahead of, uh, as, as a head of a digital team. As, as yeah. a head of a digital team. Um, if you're doing more than digital, yeah. that can shoot up to anything between 300 and 700. Okay. 700K. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was part one of my episode with Rama. We had so much to talk about that we've had to split it into two episodes. So look out for part two.